Welcome to my video for making of the clear Perspex pickguard on the PF Graphic Decal Project. Now I did try to get this video to be as quick as I could. The uncut version was about 3 hours and it really didn't seem like it took so long as it did but I actually put a lot of work into this part of the project. So I thought it deserved its own video that has turned into a two part series and I've kept it separate to the main video series about the PF Graphic Decal Project. So it's not hard to get the shape of a pick guard. You just trace around your original pick guard and jigsaw it out. Just to let you know about this bench I'm using, it's actually a router table that I have repurposed by clamping in my jigsaw to the underside. Line it up and away you go. You've got a badass cutting table. Instead of moving the jigsaw, you are moving the project around the blade. There is so much control this way, almost as efficient as a bandsaw when you can't afford a bandsaw with money or workroom space. A bandsaw itself would take up a lot of space in the area that I have to work in. This method of turning the jigsaw upside down has seen me through many projects, including the cutting of two guitar bodies. It's quite sufficient for home use, also changing the blades is much easier than on a bandsaw. On the first attempt at cutting this pit guard, I did actually have a chip away where the blade took a small bite on the outside edge. So this is the second run of cutting the pit guard. The area where it chipped would have been noticeable on the finished product, so I started again. I actually had enough material left on the acrylic sheet that I cut the first one out of to create a second one. I'm actually glad it happened so close to the beginning. If it chipped out or cracked during any of the other processes, after hours of work, I would have been quite annoyed. Because of the bad luck that I have had in the past when drilling holes in acrylic, I did a practice run to make sure I wouldn't have any trouble with this size drill. And the holes can always be made larger with the Dremel type tool I have using a diamond dust grinding tip. After the holes were big enough for the screws to pass through, I used another grinding tip to grind out the countersink for the screws. Right there next to where the switchblade goes, I made a boo-boo when using the file to shape the sides back to the traced pickguard line. I was just being careless and lifted the file too high on one pass and it smashed down onto the protective paper, it cut through and it scraped along the front. I thought I would just let it be as I felt it would be too hard to fix and I would probably make it look more noticeable by trying to fix it.
There is the other tool that I use to countersink the screw heads. And here is the polishing wheel I used to buff the edge of the acrylic, nice and shiny. I did wet sand it with high grits of sandpaper to get it this far, but it was still a bit cloudy, so this little buff brought it up quite nice. I had to be quite careful with this buffing tool. On a couple of test pieces it started to burn out and misshape the edge when I kept it held in the same spot for too long, and I mean two seconds it was too long. So even though this video is sped up, I was swift and only just let it brush past the edge which was enough to bring it up to a nice shine. With regards to the terminology I'm using for this material, I'm just going to continue to call it acrylic. I bought this from a supplier who mainly deals in acrylic sheets, but this could also be referred to as Perspex, and there is a variant called Plexiglass which is more of a brand name for acrylic, but can have different properties and be sold under other names as well. This process would have been so much slower if I did not have this tool that covered so many bases across the creation of this pit guard. Instead of completely jigsawing or drilling through for the switchblade, I used this cutting wheel to cut the start of the line. The pickguard that I am using as a template would be a throwaway once I was finished with this process. However, I have kept it around as it may be damaged, but it would be suitable for reference in the future. The cutting wheel was also handy in starting the lines for the pickup holes, which ended up being pilot holes for the jigsaw blade to complete them. I didn't have to go so close to the guidelines as I did, because once the jigsaw got in there, it was a far more efficient shaping tool. I was also lucky that I remembered that I was not cutting the third pickup near the bridge. You can see where I drew the third pickup, but somewhere between drawing it and cutting it, I decided to leave it off so that you could see Jules' gun. I would rather have Jules' gun show through than have a bridge pickup. Back to the router table being used to support the jigsaw to get ultimate control when cutting. Especially when cutting acrylic, as it is quite easy to damage your product. That push stick I'm using there has become my standard jigsawing push tool. You will see it in any video I do where I am cutting with this jigsaw. I feel like doing a video just about that push stick that came about quite by accident. It started as an off cut, but it is perfect fit in the hand and has the right elements at the end to control your product you are cutting, as well as manipulate the blade when required. It's not guitar related, so you might not see that video on this channel. It definitely does a good job of holding down your project that you are cutting.
What I am doing here is just sneaking up to the line, probably being too particular with the rounding of the edge of the pickup hole. I probably should have just got the bulk of the middle piece out first. Before too long, and in the safest way that I could, I removed the middle piece of the hole that I needed to cut out. I was using the jigsaw as a grinder to round out the side of the pickup hole. In the end this was a really conservative line as it was drawn on the inside of the original pick guard holes. So there was probably a good 1mm clearance, even if I went over this line it wouldn't have been the final cut. Using the rounded files might have torn through this material and got where I needed to be safely. Treating the jigsaw blade with respect in the end is what it's all about when dealing with acrylics.
This Dremel tool became quite a good friend on this project. In this instance, where the holes for the pots are located, I used this grinding tip to enlarge the holes out to the lines they had drawn when I traced the original pit guard. I found that this was the safest way to make these holes bigger. If I used a drill, it would have most likely grabbed and snapped off this corner of the pit guard. I had come too far to risk smashing or even just cracking the project, considering the work that I had put in already. Here I poke the round file through to help round the inside edge of the holes for the pots. I probably didn't have to put it up through this box, but this cardboard box helped with stability. On the underside of the pit guard that came as the preloaded, it has these extra holes to let the tags rest in, so as to hold the pots in a selected direction and stop them from spinning if they came loose. I was being super careful not to poke through to the other side, but even if I did, the knobs would cover up the area they exist anyway. They would poke through the image anyway, so I'm happy they are designed to go where the knobs cover it up. This is the harness from the preloaded pick guard from China. I bought this just to get the Alnico 5 pickups, and thought I would just transfer over the whole harness to make it a bit easier on myself. If I ever run into issues, I can always change the mount for CTS pots. I added a bit of extra room for the switchblade because this is a third larger than a normal pick guard. The extra thickness might have stopped it from reaching its final position without the extra clearance. 